What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple game over widget. It's going to be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is do the widget UI itself. So let's go into the content browser, just right click, go into user interface and create a new widget blueprint. It's going to be a normal user widget. Now we can name this something like WB underscore um, game over. As simple as that. Now let's go ahead and open this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a canvas panel into our hierarchy so we can start basically placing things in our screen. The first thing I'm going to do is basically just add a background which a reddish tint so we know that we're kind of dead. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just drag the image here and let's go in anchors and just fill up the whole screen. And now let's go into the offset in the left and put this in zero and same with the top, right and bottom. Basically, this will just fill up the whole screen. Now we can go into the brush in appearance or in the color and opacity. You can change the tint on the color and opacity, doesn't really matter. But for example, just go into color and opacity, okay? It will change both ways. Let's put like a reddish thing, and then we're gonna just change the alpha to be like 0.3. So it will be a bit transparent, so we can still can see our background. Now let's go and get our text in, our, in here. And basically it will be just in the middle of the screen so I can go into position X and Y and put this in 0 0 and then we can go into the text and just put it here in all caps for example game over of course you can put whatever you want now let me change the size to be a bit bigger maybe 50 actually maybe a bit bigger let's do 70 and now let's go and increase the size X and size Y so it correctly fills our UI and let's go also in the justification and just put it to be centered in the middle so it's nice and visible you know what I mean now let's go quickly into outline settings and let's go into the outline color and put this to be like a reddish tint also and then uh, also let's go into the outline settings and put a bit let's do like for example two um three yeah three is a bit better yes Something like that it doesn't need to be perfect, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is now go up here into the alignment and put this on 0.5 and 0.5. This will perfectly center it. So now I can go into the position Y and start to uh, decrease this so it will go upwards so we can put it more in between here. So now we have it there perfect. So now what we're going to do is find in the palette a uh, basically a component which is the vertical box. Let's drag it to the scene and also anchor it in the center of the screen and then put the position X and Y to be 0, 0 and then the alignment to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Now we can start changing the size X and Y to make it a bit bigger. This is where our buttons will be. In this case, let's do something like this. Okay, nothing crazy from there. Well, we're gonna have literally two buttons. So now what we can do is get the position Y, drop it a bit, so now it'll be more kind of there. Great, so now let's go into our button and just drag it inside of our vertical box. You'll see that it will be inside as a child and it will be basically aligned in position, which is what we want. Now, we can go ahead and put this into fill uh, as we will have two buttons and it will basically share the same kind of size. You'll see what I mean in a second, but let's, we just rename this button to be like um, respawn button. And that will be great. And then also let's get a text inside the button. So it'll be inside the button. And we can change this to be respawn. And now what we can do is get this, duplicate this, and change the name to be, let's say, that uh, main menu button. And now we can go inside and also change the text to be main menu. And now with that, we can go to the vertical box and maybe decrease a bit the size of Y. It's a little bit thinner and that's a bit better. And I can go into the main menu uh, button and in top, I can add some padding. For example, 30. You know, maybe that's too much. 20, that's enough. Yeah. So now they will have a bit of separation and it's a bit better. We can even go and increase a bit the vertical box over here. Yeah. You can play around with the design of the UI. I'm not going to go crazy. Something simple but functional for you to learn. So now with that, we can start to uh, basically appear our game over panel. So let's go into third person character. And here just third person blueprints, third person character blueprints. Now, in my case, I'm not gonna be making a whole health system. I already have a tutorial on that. So I'll be linking it in the description just in case you want to watch it. In this case, what I'm going to do is just when I press the key, I will basically just apply damage to myself 
and instantly spawn the panel just to showcase how it works. Okay, you want to integrate it into your health system, but like I mentioned, I have a tutorial on that, so I'll be linking in the description. Anyway, so all I'm going to do is call this event any damage uh, node. Basically, when our character will receive damage, this will be called. So here, what I want to do is just press create widget, and now we can select our W underscore uh, how was it? game over widget. Yes, and with that, we can just go and get the return value and add it into the viewport. And then to enable this, what I can do is, for example, when I press the I don't know the Y key, I can go ahead and apply damage to myself. So to self, I just put like, for example, a uh, hundred of damage. The damage doesn't really matter. Like I said, I don't have a health system, but you get the idea. So now, if I now go and press play, you can see the lows. There we go. I think it's normal. But when I press G, the game over panel spawns. But we have two problems, and it's that we cannot go ahead and um, basically press the buttons because we're still playing the game. So let's go back into our third person character blueprint. And when we basically receive damage, spawn the UI and so on. What I have to do is get the player, if I right click, there we go, get the player um, controller and then do set show mouse cursor. So we want to show our mouse cursor, so let's go ahead and take this. And also let's change the uh, input mode to be um, UI only. Yes, let's do UI only. So we will only be able to control our UI and we can actually specialize which UI we want to control in focus so we can just put our panel that we created in there and with that you will see that I can press play uh, I can press G to die and now I can move my character but I can go ahead and touch the buttons which is what I want so now one of the last things will be to add the functionality to the buttons so let's go to the WB game over we can go to the graph and we can see our variables if you don't see them just make sure that the two buttons have is variable on here but also it doesn't matter we can, we can just go for example with some uh, respawn button let's so go down into the events and just press the on clicked event so let's delete all the junk and now we only are interested on this so what we can do in here is just respawn our player now i have many tutorials on how to do this and if you have your own way of doing it great but I'm going to make it simple and just basically reload the level. Okay, as simple as that. And in this case, it's the third person map. So let's go ahead and do so. And in main menu, unclicked, I'll do the same, but load the main menu, which in my case, I don't know if I have one in this level, but in the sprite, but it will work if I, you have one called main menu. But of course, the letters has to be exactly the same. So now if I were to press play and I'll die, I can just go and press respawn and the level will open again. But you can see that my input has not changed and it's like the same. So what we have to do is make sure to copy this last notes that we did. Just copy and go. I have a lot of junk here, I know. <laughs> Too much junk. There we go. Go into the begin play. What is all this? Let me get the, yeah, there we go. Uh, and just connect it into here, okay? I will do the opposite. So instead of uh, showing the mouse cursor, we want to hide it. And on here, instead of uh, setting the uh, input mode to UI only, we want to put it back to uh, game only. And with that, that will be resolved. And actually, let's do an extra quick thing, which is basically just rattling our character. So let's get our mesh and then set simulate physics. And this will basically ragdoll our character. Now I have to have some things in mind, go into the mesh, go down and make sure that it's set into physics actor in the collision presets and then in the uh, capsule component it's set into ignore only pawn in the collision presets. Now that we're good to go, we can now compile, save and use press play. You'll see that if I put myself in full screen, there we go, I'm playing the game like normal but when I press E, I die, ragdoll and I can respawn or go to my main menu if you also have that possibility. So that's it guys, if you found this tutorial helpful, I really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, so go ahead and check them out. Now yes, with all I said, bye bye.